Hey, good morning everybody, or not good morning, good afternoon, it's uh, Brother Anthony, and today is uh, October 27th, it is 5.22pm, um, I was going to sit here and watch the game, but when God says it's time to get in the word, it's time to get in the word, you know, and uh, we left off after reading Joshua chapter 1. And Joshua chapter 2, it's a story of, it's a chapter that shows great faith in conquering the unknown. It shows a trust in God to go somewhere where you don't know the outcome. It shows a woman's faith, a woman who was living in sin, who was making really, really bad choices in life. And it shows her love for a God who brings change. And so with a uh, well, little backdrop on, on Joshua chapter 1, we read that uh, after the death of Moses, God appointed Joshua to, uh, to lead the people into the promised land. And God promised that he would never leave them nor forsake them. He said, as long as you do according to all the law that Moses gave you, if you follow my word to the T, everything that you have, everything that you do, everything that you are will be prosperous. He said, I want you to cross over into the Jordan. I want you to take over this land and I want you to lead my people into their promise. You know, and uh, and this is where Joshua, he sends two spies into Jericho. And we're going to read, I'll read it from the New King James Version. And then I'll read it again from the Living Bible Paraphrase so that we can get a better understanding. So uh, I hope you guys are blessed today. I hope you guys get something out of the story. And I pray that the Holy Spirit just... Speaks through me. So here we go. Joshua chapter 2 verse 1. Now Joshua the son of Nun. Sent out two men. From Acacia Grove. To spy secretly saying. Go. View the land. Especially Jericho. So they went. And came to the house of a harlot. Named Rahab. And lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country. Then the woman took the two men and hid them. So she said, Yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And it happened as the gate was being shut when it was dark that the men went out. Where the men w went, I do not know. Pursue them quickly, for you may, have, may overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof and hidden them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order on the roof. Then the men pursued them by the road to the Jordan. To the fords, and as soon as those were pers who pursued them had gone out, they shut the gate. Now before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now therefore I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will be kind Though you also show kindness to my father's house, 
and give me a true token, and spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. So the men answered her, Our lives for yours. If none of you tell this business of ours, and it shall be, when the Lord has given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with you. Then she let them down by a rope to the window, for her house was on the city wall. She dwelt on the wall. And she said to them, Get to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you. Hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Afterward you may go your way. So the men said to her, We will be blameless of this oath of yours, which you have made us swear, unless, when we have come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you bring your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household to your own home, so it shall be that whoever goes outside the door of your house in the street, his blood shall be on his own head, and he will be guiltless. And whoever is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head if a hand is laid on him. And if, I tell, and if you tell this business of ours, then we will be free from your oath, which you made us swear. Then she said, According to your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed, and she bound the scarlet cord in the window. They departed and went to the mountain, and stayed there three days until the pursuers returned. The pursuers sought them all along the way, but did not find them. So the two men returned, descended from the mountain, and crossed over. And they came to Joshua the son of Nun, and told him all that had befallen them. And they said to Joshua, Truly the Lord has delivered all the land into our hands, for indeed all the inhabitants of the country are faint-hearted because of us. Amen to that. So you see, when God's kingdom moves, when God starts destroying demons, when God starts shaking the foundation of, of Satan's, uh, his, his so-called kingdom, you know, people know about it. People are like, man, look at those Christians. They're really doing something in Modesto. They're really doing something on this earth. They're really showing that, that they're, what they're doing is real. Lives are being saved. People are being healed. You know, addictions are being broken. And, and God's people are really moving. It's not the people. It's the God that they serve. You know, and this harlot, this, this prostitute, this prostitute showed great faith. Because she knew, she knew that the God of heaven, it says here, that um, the God that you serve, he is a God in, in heaven above and on earth beneath. And he is making himself known. You know, and that's the God that we serve. Our God is making himself known. Our God is, is showing people that lives can be changed. That if we trust in him, if we trust in the ones that he appointed as leaders, we shall prosper. If we continue to, uh, to abide in his word, to listen to his son and the leaders that he has he has put in front of our lives, we're going to be prosperous and we're going to overtake bigger feats, bigger than Jericho. You know, uh, as chapter 3 goes on, you know, Israel, uh, the armies and, and the people, they cross the Jordan and, and they get ready to go into this land, to overtake this land, you know, and... Uh, it's up to us to obey God. It's up to us to obey God in everything that we do. You know, uh, I remember Rahab the harlot, she was also mentioned in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 11. If nobody knows about Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11 is the, is the, uh, the chapter of having faith. The chapter, is, they call it the faith chapter. Like 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is the love chapter. Hebrews chapter 11 talks about faith. So Rahab the harlot was mentioned in Hebrews 11. I'm going to read Hebrews 11, 1 through 3 first. It says, faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. You know, and Rahab was mentioned here. Let me find it real quick. It talks about right here in verse 30 and 31. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe, but she had received the spies' peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson. You know, and, uh, and God doesn't, he doesn't overlook the trust that you have in him. He doesn't overlook the faith that you have in him. He doesn't overlook the work that you're doing for his kingdom. You know, and he doesn't overlook anything that you do. If you think that you're serving God and the things that you're doing are in vain, just know that God is writing this stuff down. He's keeping tabs and he's going to bless you for just trying. If you try and you fail, God's going to encourage you to get back up and try it again. You know, because he's not a, a God who will push you away because you, because you stumbled. No, he's a God that loves you. He died for you. He died for me. He died for everybody so everybody can have that blessing. You know, um, I know this video seems like I'm a little more pumped up than, than from 5 in the morning because, hey, it's five in the afternoon, but I hope someone is ready to uh, to move mountains. Who is ready to go into unknown places, places they've never been before? It's time for us Christians to get out of our comfort zone. It's time for us Christians to go out and and be a light into the world. You know, not just to be stuck in a living room but actually to go out and reach the people. Because God's people, there, there's, there's a lot of people in need. There's a lot of people who are suffering. There's a lot of people who need to hear your words of encouragement and who need to know that there is change, that change is possible. I'm going to go ahead and skip the uh, Living Bible Paraphrase. I love this Bible, but I don't want to keep you guys too much tonight. So, until we read Joshua chapter 3, just keep your mind focused on the Word. You know, what a great uh, sermon we had today at House of Rest. It was such a blessing to be able to know that everything that I'm saying, everything that I'm doing in my life, Pastor David spoke about. Every blessing that I'm getting, Pastor David confirmed that I'm on the right track, you know, and, and that's a blessing to know. That we can do this thing. That's a blessing to know that our God is a God of miracles. You know, it's a blessing to know that me of all people. Overcame. Overcame meth. I never thought that I would overcome it. I always thought that my life would be bound in chains. I always believed that I was going to be the failure of my family. I always thought that I would have never amount to much. I always thought that this was my life. I always thought, why can't I get clean? Why can't I do this? Why can't I be a normal kid? Why can't I get my life together? 
But I thank God. I thank God that he saved me. I thank God that he brought freedom and, and joy and peace into my life. And I thank God that I don't have to live that way no more. And I thank God that he planted my feet upon solid ground. You know, uh, sorry for tearing up right here, but God has delivered me. God has shown his love. And he will show you his love. Let me read this. Do you wonder? Do you wonder where you can go for encouragement and motivation? Go back to that moment when you first saw the love of Jesus Christ. Remember the day when you were separated from Christ? You knew only guilt and confusion and then light. Someone opened the door and light came into your darkness. And you said in your heart, I am redeemed. Can you recall the moment you first believed? You felt a flame in your heart that was dancing so hot that you knew even death couldn't put it out. Is that flame still there? If it is, then fan it. Bring it to life. Stand face to face with the only hope that earth, this earth knows. Jesus described for his followers what he came to do. He came to build a relationship with people. He came to take away enmity, to take away the strife, to take away the isolation that existed between God and man. Once he bridged that, he overcame that. He said, I will call you friends. I've noticed that those who serve God most joyfully are the ones who know him most personally. Those who are quickest to speak about Jesus are those who realize how great, how great has been their own redemption. God is an exalted friend, a holy father, and an elevated king. How do we approach him? As king, as father, or as friend? The answer is yes. All those. Let's pray out. Heavenly Father, I continue to magnify you and thank you for the life that you have given me. I thank you for the joy, the peace. I thank you for things to finally be going right in my life. When so long, Lord, Things have went wrong. When so long, Lord, things did not go right. Father, I trust in you. Father, I love you. Father, I praise you. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for showing me that there is a better way. That just as your word promised, that I will be a new creation in you. That I can stand on you, stand on that firm foundation that when the winds and storms of life come, I will not fall. And Father God, I've been through the storm, Lord. I know the people who are watching have been through the storm, Lord. And you have planted their feet, Father God, on this solid ground, which is your son. I pray that you continue to help us build this foundation and, and fortify our walls and protect ourselves from the evil one, Lord God, because he knows he is running loose, seeking whom he may devour. But we are covered. We are covered in your son. We are covered in your love. And nothing, nothing he throws at us can, can will prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. But we shall have that victory in your son. I love you, Father. I thank you for the people who are watching. I pray for my brother Michael, Michael Trejo in, in, in Los Angeles, that you would just touch his life, Father God. I pray for my sister Victoria, that you'll bless her household, that you'll run rampant through her house and, and take away any, any form of ugliness and drug addiction and, and protect her and her children, Father God. I pray for peace. 
for anyone who is suffering. I love you, Father, and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, it is time to relax and watch this game. Turn this TV on. Hopefully the Chiefs aren't beating us too bad. Well, God bless you, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.